Hi, everybody. This is Joy Lagerie, and you've just joined Matured Musicians Group. And I'd like to give a word and a shout out to our uh, sponsor, Luscious Moss Studio, owned and operated by Chad Christ in Edgewood, Washington. And he create he he primarily works with drummers, recording drummers and guitarists, but he does other things there too. So he has created an environment that is very relaxing and, and brings out the creative um, collaborations that happen there at his studio. So today, with, the, with that being said, yeah, we have a guest, uh, Ted Pickett is with us today. I'm very honored to have him. He's a great musician. So how are you today, Ted? <laughs> I'm good. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm an okay musician, but uh, thank you, you know. Uh, I appreciate that. Well, you not only, you know, I say that because you not only play, um, play bass guitar like a pro, but you also... Uh, do your own lead work in, in some of the songs that you've done. So we've got two listeners coming on right now. So hi, guys, even though you haven't said anything yet. Um, so I kind of like to know how in the world do you ever got into music? What what was the uh, first thing that, when was the first time you were introduced to it and your first instrument? You know, I, I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to say, but as a little kid, I you know, I think both me and my brother did take piano lessons. Uh -huh. um, I wasn't you really, still play, and you still play. I, you know, but I I play because I fiddle around with it. But um, <laughs> back in the in the old days, what they do is they'd have you put they sheet put sheet music in front of you, yeah. and you try to play along with that. I I I guess I just had a harder time with with doing the sheet music and having the discipline to do that. I was more of a kind of person that would go down and fiddle on the piano without having to try to you know match up with the dots although i get the the concept of reading music right um it's it's not as natural to me as to to hear okay. music which yeah. actually lends itself to rock and roll quite a bit is you know most rock bands what you do is you listen to the song over and over you memorize it you play along with the song and that's how you learn but you know, back then I was, I think I got kicked out of piano class for <laughs> behavior or something or oh, you know, no. believe it or not. Yes. Uh, yeah. I got upset because I couldn't think, I don't know. I got, I got tripped up playing one of the songs and then they made me go back to the beginning. And I think I got upset and they made me sit outside, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. And then, um, yeah, in, in uh, third grade, one of my friends uh, was playing trumpet, so I decided, okay, I'm going to play trumpet. <laughs> and um, then he decided he was going to switch to trombone. I asked my parents if I could switch to trombone, and they said no. And then my friend quit, and I said, well, I, I want to quit too. And they said, no, you got to finish out the year. <laughs> um, you know, the one good thing, though, about that is it kind of taught me tenacity is, you know, sometimes it's easy to quit. Sometimes yes. it's easy to just give up on things and whatever, but it did teach me to kind of See stick to things for the long haul. Yeah. So I've, I think I've always done that as I've, I've, you know, I've, I stick things out for the long haul and I don't, I just don't quit easy in, in anything. So it's, it's I can it's attest really, to that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you. You kept out learning my music, especially uh, sold. Yeah. <laughs> I finally get that one nailed too. But anyway, I have somebody on here who hasn't identified themselves. Um, it says, hello, Joy and Ted. So hi, whoever you are. Hi. <laughs> it's probably oh, Raymond, but <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so how old were you when you had to take those piano lessons? I don't know, probably six or seven. Maybe maybe second grade. Second grade. Second so grade. maybe uh, yeah, seven or eight or, or so. Yeah, I had my own stint of piano and music lessons. And I was older when I took piano. Um, and I took it because I couldn't carry a piano to a, yeah. to a camp out, you know? <laughs> so, you so. know, when I did get into college, I did, uh, you know, we have the music theory. And in order to do that, you have to do a piano proficiency. So I did take yeah. some piano then. And I was a lot more focused on it. Um, Again, I, I like to fiddle around with the piano more than yeah. you know, we're supposed to do this. And and for me, when something captures my interest, it's a lot easier for me to kind of focus on it and hyper-focus on, on uh, right. you know, what I need to do. 
Exactly. Yeah, if I like something enough, I will sit down and I'll learn it. So. Yeah, I I, I don't know if I, I might have mixed that up, but I basically I'd been playing piano and taking piano lessons and getting fairly good at it and learning chords and all that kind of stuff, how to play two different things, one yeah. of the right hand, one of the left. And uh, then I decided to go switch to guitar because you can't take the, the piano everywhere. Yeah. But um, then, uh, you know, like anything else, it, it, you forget. And I didn't keep it up enough to be able to play proficiently at this point. Yeah. So by the time you were, you know, by the time you were in um, high school, were you also playing the guitar or doing gigs or playing in a school band? Well, well, here's the thing is, is, I mean, I don't know what actually got me into music. I mean, I could have been watching the Partridge family or the Brady Bird, you know, the Osmond brothers or whatever, <laughs> uh, you know, that, Oh, well that looks kind of appealing. And it's like, Oh, that would be cool. But I think the first thing, uh, that I, it's hard to say, but I, I told my parents I liked rock music and I wanted to play guitar. Mm -hmm. I wanted to play electric guitar. They said, okay, well, first you got to play acoustic guitar. So I did that for about six months and it's like, I'm dedicated. I want to get electric guitar. So they did finally buy me my first guitar. It was a, it was a, a Music West Mateo SG copy and a, just a little Fender combo amp uh, <laughs> that didn't even have any distortion. It had something called intensity, which had that sort of wavy, you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of over sound to it. Um, but, you know, I had that for a while. So I played guitar, you know, just fiddled around, took a few lessons. Uh, again, I think my ear kind of overtook my ability yeah. to try to learn. So I, I, the teacher would show me some songs and I'd play it. And then I think I came in once and remember playing the chords to the Lemon song because I'd heard that. And I thought, oh, wow. You know, so I, I kind of had a little bit of that natural ear. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the first in high school, and I might get a little bit off on a tangent here. And I, <laughs> Go right I in. <laughs> well, I mean, I might kind of talk about my philosophies in music, but in high school, I had some friends and we got together and I was still playing guitar. They played guitar um, and nobody, we didn't have a bass player. Well, um, kind of fast forward. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to kind of talk about this, but I'll just go back to my philosophy about how music is. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people look at music as being kind of, you know, mathematical and yes, uh, yes. And, you know, very logical, but there's a whole other side to music. Yes. And, there and is. The other side to music that really resonates with me is, is spiritual and it's the human spirit. It's whatever that is. It's, it might even be, you know, some people call it the Holy spirit. Some people call it your higher self. Some people call it, you know, whatever that law of attraction is, whatever that thing is. Uh, and that's always kind of stuck with me in music. Um, well, in, in high school, I was kind of a stoner kid and, you know, smoked a lot of pot. I got kicked out of school. Well, my friends were too, but um, I had a friend of mine, Mark Leslie and, and my other friend, Eric, and they, they both got saved and became Christian. And, and, you know, they brought me to Cedar Park because somebody got or whatever. And so we all kind of went into that fold together and um, they, we were going to try to form a band at that time and nobody had a base and just again if you want to call it the law of attraction or you know sometimes you're just given what you need needed even if it's maybe ill-gotten needed but uh mm -hmm. a, a, somebody i knew had a base and i'm i know the circumstances weren't great for how they got that base but oh. uh, <laughs> another story <laughs> okay, another story altogether but i ended up acquiring that and trading a bunch of albums for it so i ended up getting myself an ls 335 uh gibson bass guitar with and uh we had a band there so because i was able to get the bass i became the bass player and you know the other guitar player i think was starting to get a lot better than me but we did that and we kind of our first band was we played at church but um then we decided we were going to kind of we got in an old friend of our guitar player, my friend Eric, but his friend Don, his parents played. Um, they were professional musicians. They played in a duo and they would play. That was your well, friend's parent. That was yeah. your friend's 
Yeah, the friends, my friend's parents, he was a drummer, but he'd also go on tour with them over to Canada wow. during the summertime. And uh, his parents were the, the top 40 duo, keel and keyboards and, and vocals. And they got us our first gig um, playing, our first paid gig as a top 40 group. We had a, um, it was down in Kirkland. And I think we, we, we each made like, you know, it was like 380 for a weekend, which was a lot of money for kids. A lot of who, money. Yeah, for, for yeah. kids who were 19 and, and yeah. 18. And, and it was sort of our first gig in there. So um, the singer we had was um, used to fill in for my friend's mom when she was sick or pregnant. She had a lot of, they had a lot of kids. So she, got, <laughs> she was pregnant away a lot, but that was kind of our first top 40 band. And we did play, we lasted about a month. <laughs> no. Um, well, there was, there were some conflicts and issues and that happens with every band is yeah. um, different people. One person wanted to control it this way. One person wanted to control it that way. So it kind of switched out a little bit, but um, you know, Later on, I played in some metal bands and metal cover bands during the 80s. And, and uh, just bass was the, my main instrument. So bass has been pretty much the only instrument I've ever played in a band. Okay. Um, but but more in, that, in, that, in, in that, backing up a little bit, I, I never really gave up playing acoustic guitar. In fact, you know, I, I played it a few times, I think, you know, wrote some songs. And that's how I would write songs is, is through an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. It just conveys a little bit better. It's harder to write just on the bass, but I've always had that. I put it aside for a number of years, but I've, for writing music, uh, acoustic guitar has always kind of been the instrument that I use. Yeah, we got another uh, listener here saying hi. So, hi, you know, hi. Yourself, I can't tell you who you are, but uh, uh, welcome to the show. And had the, the you know, that, Thing that I know that you do because I went to one of your gigs. I'm sorry, it was only one, but sometimes I just don't have enough time to do everything I'd like to. But um, you also started picking up on on some Neil Diamond music. When did that occur? Was that out right after this, or did that occur later that you got involved with that? You know, I'm actually kind of glad you asked me that, but. Um... I've played with a lot of original bands and I played with a lot of cover bands. Yeah. I was playing, it's not your bio. Yes. No, but I was playing in a, a, a top 40 band, uh, a group called idolize and we mm -hmm. used to play some casinos, but we would also play some private parties and we would play some weddings. And there was a couple that requested the song sweet Caroline. Oh. And, uh, and I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I think I can do that song. I, that's that's something that I think fits my voice because I have a lower range voice and it just sounds really natural. So, you know, we did that and I, I sang it and the other band members were saying, oh my gosh, you sound a lot like him. I mean, I don't think I sound just like him, but I I, I think I sound really close and it's it's fairly easy for me to do that. So yes, we did this wedding and I'm doing the Sweet Caroline and it's the first time I hear people ever going bump, bump, bump. And so, <laughs> good, so, good. so I was like, what's going on here? Is it, did, did they just make this up or what? <laughs> but uh, that was the first time that I'd done Neil. And I had a lot of compliments and said, oh, my gosh, you sound a lot like him. Um, and I put that away for a number of years. Oh, no. And, um, and uh, I didn't think about it. And I, I think we were playing somewhere with the shortcuts. And somebody requested the song Sweet Caroline and, and, and Taryn goes, I don't know it. I don't know. Or get guitar player. I'll just say that. I won't. But he, and I said, well, wait a minute. I know this. I, it's, it's, a, it's a three chord song. If we just do these three chords and do it, we can do it. And so people liked it. And, um, you know, I thought I put it in the repertoire. But I, I didn't really think much about it. And I kind of kept it buried. But I also heard some people say, you do sound a lot like it. And I kept that buried for a while. And I, I think I went to a jam night and I filled in or something with another band. And again, they said, wow, you really do sound a lot like Neil. You should probably do something with it. And at that point, I just started thinking, well, you know what? Why not? I mean, it, 
it wasn't necessarily music I would listen to a lot, but my brother, he was, when he was a kid, he had a bunch of Neil Diamond albums. And it's, it could just be possible that when he was playing those albums that it just picked up and it was just easy for me to sing. Right. But, exactly. um, but I decided, you know what, why not try something with it? So I started learning some of the, the songs and, and um, incidentally, Sweet Caroline was not the first uh, Neil Diamond song I learned on guitar. Really? Which I, one? I, actually, the first one I, I learned on guitar was I Am I Said. And as I started listening to these Neil Diamond songs, I just realized, wow, these are really well-written songs. These are powerful songs. These are, this is a little bit out of sight in my comfort zone, but I, I just realized I mean, these are very well written pop songs. They have, they convey a message and they kind of convey that, you know, that spiritual message a little bit, you know, it's not religious or anything, but it's just like a, it's, it's, it, you connect with people. And the reason that he was so popular is he wrote, wrote these songs that mm -hmm. would connect with people. And that's, I mean, that's always what I thought music was all about. It is, I think. Yeah. So yeah. I wrote it and, I had a friend that I had ran into somebody and because um, I was thinking about doing this and, you know, maybe jamming with some people that would do that. And he says, oh, he plays retirement homes. I was thinking, I need an audience. I need an audience to be able to do the, the Neil Diamond. And when right. I heard that he had mentioned he played retirement homes, I, I thought, what a great idea. What a great idea. So, I mean, my initial... Um, journey into playing retirement homes uh, was a bit, a bit selfish. It was a little bit selfish. I was looking for an audience that I could play these songs to. So it changed you, didn't it? It did. It did. So I just started doing that. I realized that they like it. And so I started out with it, with the intention of just doing a Neil tribute, acoustic tribute. Right. I did have to switch gears a little bit because not everybody knew, you know, the folks yeah. that were, in their 90s, none of them really knew who Neil was. People yeah. in their 80s, they kind of know, and the people in their 70s, of course, um, was were quite familiar with that. But so I did have to switch up. So I started adding in, you know, a few more old standards, you know, sentimental journey, or like, you are my sunshine. That's the big hit that's in retirement. Yeah. But yeah. I started adding that into the mix and um, just started working with that, kind of getting down my, my routine and, it's it's been good, yes. but I really enjoy the fact that I can come in there and I can make somebody's day and yes. you know, make them yes. smile. And if I can leave them smiling, if I can leave them singing, and with something to remember, then I've done what I need to do. But exactly, um, but Ted, Ted and I have this in common. Um, I I belong to the Bothell uh, Senior Band, and. Uh, and we go into the same kinds of environments and it's amazing the response we get. And when you do it, Ted, you know, you just said it does, it changes you. You begin to understand a lot of yeah. things you didn't realize with a live audience in a, in a bar or that kind of setting is quite different in a retirement home where people are, uh, they come alive. It's like yes. almost like you gave yeah. them a lot of life. <laughs> I, I'm going to say, though, sometimes it's a lot harder to yes. get. Yeah, yes. Especially in the memory care places, the places where people are a little bit, it's a lot harder to to reach those people. But when you do it, it is rewarding. And, and yes. I'm going to say it's there's not a lot of money in it. If you if you want to do it for because you think it's a great way to get money or to get paid right away, forget getting paid right away. I mean, if you do, <laughs> you're, lucky. you're lucky. You're really lucky. But I think for the most part, you have to do it as a labor of love. And if you're not right. doing it as a labor of love, it's not really going to work. So um, Man, I'm going to get back to that point, but I got a message on here for you with a questioner asking me some questions. He said, his name is Patrick O'Donnan, I believe. I forgive me if I pronounce your last name wrong. Um, from a band in Dublin Abbey, uh, from the band Dublin Abbey. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one, but I will look it up. It said, did you play jazz at any point? I very reluctantly played jazz in the secondary school and found it really improved my chops and wondered how many other bass players had that experience. And did you do the high school jazz band thing? 
You know, I never did the high school jazz bands, but I really enjoy jazz. Uh, some of my favorite music that when I started playing bass and I kind of switched from guitar is, is sort of progressive rock. And a lot of the progressive rock musicians of the 70s and 60s had jazz influence. Yeah. So some of the bands that I was listening to uh, were like Yes and Kansas and, and Rush. And um, you know, one thing that I, I know about um, Kansas is that Kerry Livgren, who wrote most of the songs, he, I think, lived with his aunt or grandmother who had a lot of collections of jazz and classical music. So he grew up with that. And um, some of the people that were, I don't know, the one person that told me what kind of music to listen to in high school, I'm not saying that, but there was a guy that had long hair and he looked like he was way cooler than us. And I, we talked about music we liked and like Ted Nugent, oh, that's no talent. That's not, you should listen to this and whatever. It's like, oh, okay, well, I'll try listening to that because, well, obviously you have longer hair and you're probably cool. And I started, and it was just about the time that I started playing bass. And one of the bands that, you know, was suggested to listen to was a group called Yes. And, uh, you know, they're very prominent in the 70s. The one thing that I really liked about Yes and, and, um, is that each member was playing a separate part. The bass wasn't necessarily following the guitar part. Bass was doing its own part, entirely own part, independent of the guitar. And I was like, wow, that's some music that I got to listen to. So I really was kind of influenced a little bit in high school by Yes. I mean, in elementary school, I was influenced by Alice Cooper, but it's just because I heard the song, School's Out. And uh, that might bring me to another point is, um, yeah, I was I was maybe about 10 years old when I heard the song School's Out. It's like, wow, that's the most hardest rocking song I'd ever heard <laughs> at nine or 10 years old. And I, I, there's a guy that used to babysit us, this, you know, lived four, down, four doors down. He's about four years older than, than me. And I'd say, yeah, they, that School's Out Forever song, that's great. And he goes, oh, that's Alice Cooper. And I go, Alice Cooper, what's that? Isn't that a girl's name? I was like, <laughs> no, no, that's it. It's it's actually a guy, but it's a band, and and um, so he brought over recordings of the bill of, of the album Billion Dollar Babies, which I still think is probably one of the best albums. It and it's just it. I think it really kind of changed my life because that was the first time that I had really heard hard rock music and and this real unbelievable stage performance that Alice did, but it, it had a, a kind of a shock your parents type of thing. But in the end, it, that was the first music that sort of really put me over the edge into rock and roll. And, uh, you know, I would listen to Billion Dollar Babies or the recordings of it. It was basically, <laughs> I recorded a cassette off of somebody else's cassette who was recorded off of the album. And, uh, so I had almost all of them except for two songs. Uh, that was sort of my first influence into rock and roll. And then, I mean, after that, the Stones, the Beatles, Black Sabbath, um, Jimi Hendrix. And then I kind of discovered, you know, Rush and, and Ted Nugent and, and bands like that on my own. But that was kind of the background because just the age I grew up and what we listened to. Right. I mean, that's not too much different than what what we play in the shortcuts, although we don't do any Alice Cooper, which, well, <laughs> not very much Alice Cooper if we do any, but um, that was kind yeah. of a, a, one of my first loves in music, so. And there's kind of a set right here into this because this guy's name is Patrick and, and yeah. it's Donnan, I think, yeah. uh, from the Dublin Abbey Band. Now that sounds Irish to me. Oh, and yeah. I think there's some Irish going on in your performances. As yes, well. um, it's funny, but uh, I do do some Irish music. Um, one of the first songs that I ever did, uh, that was Irish was a song that was requested at one of the retirement homes. It was a, uh, World War II vet. It was a guy who worked on the aircraft carriers and he worked on the airplane and he said, can you please do Danny boy? And I said, you know what? I'm going to learn that song the next time that I come out. And mm -hmm. so I'm going online and I'm looking for a version of that in the song in the key of C. Yeah. It's, it's easy to play. Yes. If you do it in there, it's easy to play. It was easy to sing. I came across uh, somebody named Father Kelly, who is, I guess, he's very big in Ireland, and he sings. Uh, he was on Ireland's Got Talent. And so he 
I mean, he has just an absolute beautiful voice. But one of the things that in his version is in the middle section, they kind of go into an Irish jig. So I'm kind of trying to adopt that into my style. So I'm doing this sort of jig in the middle type of thing in the key of D because that's sort of what they do. So it's loosely based on that. But um, I I had a, a, a opportunity to, to do a gig and I do write my own music. And they uh, at this particular uh, venue, they wanted either original music or music that was in public domain. And at that, that time, the thing that just first came to my mind is Irish music. I've got maybe about an, if I, if I really try hard, I can get about an hour's worth of my originals in there, but there's no way I can learn two hours worth of, write two hours worth of music. So I thought, you know what? I am Irish. I enjoy Irish music. You know, I enjoy the music of the Chieftains. I enjoy lots of that. So what I did is I just sat down and learned another hour's worth of some Irish music, but I've been incorporating that into some of the, the retirement homes because they dig that too. And uh, it, it it's, I can do that in the retirement homes as well as doing my Neil stuff. Yeah. And, uh, but you've done all. it in other places too. If I remember correctly, you did some Irish tunes at highway two or something. Yes. Was that was that, yeah. that was that gig. That was that first gig where yeah. I had to learn, oh, okay. had to learn all right. Irish music. All right. I very fortunate enough that I, I ran into a guy that I know that, that played fiddle and he yeah. was able to come out and accompany me with that. I wished he, I wished I would have been able to pay him more money. I would have put the money in the tip jar and I probably could have. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, he's a really good player. Um, yeah, well, I, coming from the audience point of view, I loved every second of it. It was great. And he, he was a good player, so he added a lot yeah. as well. But uh, yeah, you play lead to those songs. I mean, you play your own, your own version of the song from, you'd have more lead in you than than rhythm players or bass so <laughs> well the other thing is is sometimes i have to accompany myself and so there's mm -hmm. you know there's either chords or and then sometimes in the irish music you know you have a little bit of a medley line you have a little bit yeah. you have to play that so i've kind of been able to sort of do a little bit of that and, and um <laughs> accompany myself that way but i do really enjoy irish music as well as so I didn't know you were Irish. That's that's uh, interesting. My, my uh, well, from what I understand, my grandpa Pickett was full-blooded Irishman. Wow. Uh, I don't know if it's probably both his parents. I don't know if they came from Ireland or if it was, you know, his grandfather. I do know that uh, the name was changed from Pickett, P-I-G-O-E-T, to Pickett, and I also know that one of my great aunts had done some lineage and traced back somebody back to like Lord Mayor of Dublin. And I didn't see a Pigot in there, but I did see a Picot. So uh, I'm thinking it might've been some of the Norman French or the English who came over, but that was sounds like more of a French name. So possibly in, in that realm there somewhere. All right. Well, I like the music. I hope you keep on and I wanna hear more of it. So I didn't anyway, moving yeah. on from that to COVID. Um, which is today and it's still raging. Now we've got yeah. a new one that Omicron, Omicron, I don't have to say, have to say uh, no. and, um, and that's coming in and hoping that it, as somebody said, thanks, interesting interview. Uh, anyway, uh, give us an idea of how, as a musician, you managed to get through this period and it, and you're still, you're still in it, but not quite. You're not yeah. locked down. Well, I mean, at first it was a little bit frustrating. I didn't really know what to do. It's, yeah, it's all of a sudden, I can't play anywhere. So, I mean, at first I started watching the, you know, streaming and you know, yeah. watched all the Sons of Anarchy, watched all the Vikings and, and things like that. But I also kind of spent the time to, 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 uh, well, okay, I got a few song ideas and just, um, I had some ideas lying around just from fiddling around and, and I decided, you know what, I should probably just finish some songs up that I've, I had song ideas that I wanted to write. So I did do that. And I think I ended up with, you know, maybe about four original songs that uh, sort of evolved or came out of uh, all of that. Out of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think there was, uh, there was as time progressed a time when, 
they started moving all these canvas things outside and people were including Kurt and I, uh, we'd go out to a restaurant and go into those and in the fresh air and so forth. I mean, you're still covered, they had heaters in there. And I understand that you did play some of those places, is that correct, in the Oxford, was it? Um, no? We were one of the first groups to kind of get back in there, but I think it's both because, you know, me and me and Taryn had a pretty strong work ethic and, yeah. and we wanted to play. So we did finally get back into some places early on. We had a few false starts and, you know, things closing up. It's like, well, now things are open. Well, no, now things are closed again. Um, I don't recall playing in a lot of tents, but we did. Oh, you know, okay. We did go out and, and try to play and make our own way, um, making a little bit of extra money. Yeah. We felt it. Are you are you going to play for us one of your songs that came out of that COVID period? Sure. Yeah. There's a couple. Okay. Of now, now this isn't going to be studio stuff because this stream isn't exactly yeah. the best audio in the world, but it'll give you an idea of the kinds of things Ted does. All right. Well, hopefully I can get this. It doesn't sound too bad, but all right. This is, uh, this is one that I had some ideas floating around with this, but this song was just like not quite complete yet. But, you know, it, with everything that happened in COVID, I guess I had to get inspired by something. So <laughs> all right. It's COVID itself or whether it's something else, but this is a, uh, this is one that I, I kind of, I don't know, maybe self-explanatory. It's called, I don't want to lose myself, so. Gotta admit, it's been a really strange year. Hope we never see anything like this. Yeah. I believe it's been a really strange year. I just want to be my friends. I know what I want, I know what I need, I just gotta be. I just want to be again what it's like to be free.
One more. Can I get you to play a, um, an Irish ditty? That was kind of Irish. Yeah, I heard <laughs> I that. Sort of, I was sort of Celtically influenced, but... Uh, uh, I heard that, yes. Gosh, what can I do that's Irish? <laughs> well, Let me think of something. Um, what key or what do you key are you playing that in? Uh, you you get your capo quite high. I couldn't. Well, I did. That was sort of uh, inspired because I was. I think I learned the song "Here Comes the Sun," which is I guess on the set. Oh movie. yeah. And what happened is like I started playing around with it. It's like wow, this kind of ah. cool. I'll just start feeling that, but that's why it's up there. Um, what's a good Irish song I could? Do? While he's doing that, I just want to remind everyone um, who may be watching later or in now uh, that Ted is a songwriter as well. He is as well advertised out there as some songwriters. Yeah. All right, Ted. In Dublin's best city, where the girls are so pretty, I felt that the eyes and sweet Molly were low. But she built a wheelbarrow through streets broad and down, like a blue thing of soup, all alive, 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 alive. Actually, just that's just an example of one. So, oh, bravo! <laughs> yeah, I like it. There's, right. so many, there's so many good ones. So, I mean, Spanish Lady, uh, um, Red is the Rose, uh, uh, Johnny, I hardly knew ye. Uh, uh, and the list goes I mean, on. Yeah. We have another caller didn't identify themselves, but they said, hello, Joanne and Ted Pickett. So we've got somebody else here that wants to greet us. So uh, we're glad you're here. And uh, Ted is just performing an original song and some of the Irish stuff he does. Um, well, I don't think I can get by without not doing a Neil song. That's right. All right. So... <laughs> It's December, so it is Christmas time. So here's All one right. that I don't get to do very often, and hopefully okay, I will dress it up. Because I only get to learn this one once a year, or so <laughs> take it away. Christmas, 
even when things go wrong. I feel the sound of Christmas in the song. Look at the sun shining on me. Nowhere could be a better place. Love is in love, just like we were. Cause when I'm with you, it's Christmas Day And you make it feel like Christmas Even when things go wrong I hear the sound of Christmas in your song All year long you know it's true, babe. Look at us now, part of this all. Let's light up the tree, it's Christmas Day And you make it feel like Christmas Even when things go wrong I feel the sound of Christmas in your song All year long you know it's gonna be there. Oh, yeah, All right, Ted, you got us in the Christmas mood now. We got another, we, we know who this is. Lori Thompson said hello to both of us with a little heart. Hi, Lori. <laughs> Back to you, Lori. Ah, oh, well, I can't do it on. Wow, where do I my heart? <laughs> I can't do it. There you go. Okay, is that how you do it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, so what's what's your now? Speaking of Christmas, have Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Uh, if I don't get to say it to you personally or on Facebook, and someone just said awesome here, so Ted, you've got that praise out there. But uh, now that it's Christmas, or almost Christmas, and you got us in the mood, Merry Christmas to everybody, and Happy New Year. And if anybody is watching that uh, doesn't use Christmas as a holiday, Happy Holidays to you as well. All right, so what's looking? What's it looking like in your future, Ted? Can you give a little rundown of maybe music you're working on, things that you might be um, going to present when you're working with the band? Uh, just give us a glimpse into what's happening for you in 2022. Well, um, it's going to be hard to say, but I think things are going to be a little different 2022 than they were. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful about the future and, uh, I'm, you know, looking forward and, and, uh, of course I always love playing. So, uh, <laughs> I, I'm just going to keep looking forward um, with with uh, music and also real estate. If anybody used to buy a house, I'm <laughs> help you sell your place. Yes, that's right. Okay. He's a realtor as well. Yes. yes. Where, uh, where do you sell? Um, do you, is it all over the greater all Seattle? All over the place, but if somebody wants a condo out in uh, Snohomish, I can work you up a deal right now. <laughs> well, you got it right, just right up. here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So in the in all the times that you've been playing with the bands that you've played and and learning how to do all of this and writing your own music, et cetera, what moments um, in your life would you have to say were one of those aha moments? Or I mean, I know there's probably a whole string of them, but things that kind of really changed your life in a way 
um, and I think you kind of mentioned something like this, but um, it changed you in a way that was uh, awe inspiring. All right, I'm going to put my guitar down, and I, I, I um, uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to say this because I may not have like the same experiences that a lot of other oh, well here we go all right <laughs> I have the same experiences that a lot of other people do that are in the music uh field but um i'm just going to go back to the fact that i really think that music is very spiritual and it's a way to connect with people i mean we all look about the you know we think about you know notes and sounds and pitches and and all these things these these rhythms and words that we put all together i mean they're what random sounds, how does this, this, this thing about random sounds come together into something that's, that's meaningful and, and, you know, it touches people's hearts. Yeah. Uh, and I still have to go with my, my, my gut feeling and my belief that I really do believe music is spiritual. And I think, yeah, I know maybe that sounds corny and I'll probably no, get I agree. I, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of people that might laugh at me, but I, I really think that it really taps into the human psyche and it reaches people in an element that, you know, other things can't. I've heard somebody say that people use art to decorate their wall. And I think I read something where people use music to decorate their memories. And it's like, that's cool. Well, it might sound silly on the on the surface, but it's I like, like I it. it. that's just so profound. Is that you know we touch people's hearts through music, and when you're playing music and you're listening to music, I mean, whether you're you're, you're a performer or or just listening, you're connecting with people in this spiritual realm. You know, I mean, I don't care if it's it's there is something really spiritual and really moving. And I think you're just kind of connecting with the divine force, whether it's God. I mean, I, I happen to believe in God. I don't know if other people do, but whether they don't, you're connecting with somebody on a emotional, spiritual level that, um, you know, just kind of transcends explanation. So um, that's, I think, kind of my thought, my beliefs, my philosophy is that um, when you're, yeah, music music touches that that soul that that thing that we can't really see that's tangible it's it comes outside of your your body it's outside of your mental intellect i mean it does touch your mental intellect but it touches your heart it touches your soul it's that it's kind of that energy that kind of maintains you and keeps you going but i mean i could go on and on about you know my <laughs> philosophies about you know whether it's whether it's in a church doing the Holy Ghost dance, or whether it's Robbie Shankar playing, you know, sitar music. I mean, that touched George Harrison. That inspired him and the Beatles, and they wrote a lot of songs from that spiritual energy. Whether you're at a rock concert, I mean, you're you're yeah. in a spiritual. You're you're getting this sort of connection. That's I mean, you know, they call it the Church of Blues. You, you go to the blues jams, and it's it's. I mean, it's true. You're. Yes. You're conveying these emotions and you're conveying a truth and you're conveying that truth might just be what your heart's going out, but you're touching somebody's heart and that has to come from the spirit and that comes from within. That's not something that I think you can just write down in a book or, or whatever. But I mean, I guess if there's any aha moment is that I have yes. to say that, uh -huh. yeah. you know, music, I music is a connection with the divine. So I want you, I want you through? to tell the story, Ted, um, and I know it might be a little embarrassing for you to tell a story about yourself, but uh, one of the people that was reading um, the things that I posted in Mature Musicians said she had a patient and that you played for her. And uh, two weeks later, she was dead, but uh, she was so grateful. Can you tell us a little bit about what was going on there? Because talk about spiritual. I think that's as spiritual as you can get. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, it, it, I have to admit, it wasn't, I, I was already scheduled to play at this place. So okay. oh, I'm, getting, I'm getting something here. I'm covered up. All right. Hold on. My computer. <laughs> I'm getting a pop-up. Okay. So I was already scheduled to play this. Uh, I think it was a Brookdale out in Kirkland. And she worked in the hospice department. And yeah. she asked me if I could come out and, you know, play for her. Her, her patient who was, was dying. And it's like, of, of course I will. And 
you know, anytime I get to be able to share music with somebody, if it's their last thing, I hope that I've been able to reach them and touch them. But, you know, for me, that's, that's a free gift, you know. I think. No, I think for extra hours. That's me wanting to share what I've got and, and, you know, hopefully be able to touch them so that their last few minutes here on earth are, are, um, meaningful I've, I've helped them in some way or maybe i've helped them transition on to wherever they're going which i believe is a good place so yes i i i just i think that story just um tells a lot about who you really are and my first impression of you when we first <laughs> when we first met you know you were really you really wanted to help with the music when I went up there and you, you know, you're the one who asked me to go to the Stuart jams, but along with that, you worked really hard in trying to learn country music of all things and my music. And, and I, and there is always a warm hug at the end and encouragement from you. I could feel the love and it was passed along. So uh, you, you've been an inspiration for a long time and I hope people come out to hear some of the things that you're doing. I hope you post them on Mature Musicians because you have a lot to share and there's a lot of love in you and it comes across. And one of the funny stories I put on Mature Musician is that you would come around from the bandstand. You know, people always stand in kind of a straight line in the bandstand. It, when he didn't understand something I was playing, he'd come around and stand right in front of me and watch my fingers. It was so cool, Ted. Well, it's like I said, I wanted to get the songs right. And a lot of country does have a, a, a yeah. sort of a formula to it. But yeah. every now and then there's like, okay, it goes <laughs> aside from that. And there's some chord changes. And I want to make sure that I'm backing you up on the right changes. Well, I appreciated yes. it. And, it. and it helped me move on to other things. So do you have any gigs coming up that um, we, we could go see you uh, um, play? Um, well, any, anything that, well, uh, are the shortcuts playing anytime soon or we'll be playing this weekend, um, Friday night over at Rocco's and then Rocco's? Where, Rocco's, where uh, Fireside Grill It's in Everett. It's off of Beverly way. So if you were to take the, um, like toward Everett mall, instead of going toward that, you would take a right turn and you'd follow Beverly slightly north about a half a mile and it's on the on the left hand side but uh it's it's really close to that ever mall exit all right and then on Saturday we'll be at uh, collector's choice uh CCR yes in in um in some home. Home, correct yeah that's kind of a nice place so if you guys i don't know yeah. about this rockos i've never been there but i do know ccr yeah. is a great place and you guys always give a great show i mean you got people packing the dance floor everywhere yeah. you go so and then um i think the 22nd which is a wednesday we're going to be over at uh ingles pub from 8 to 11. which eagles Ingles. Ingles. Oh, is in Ingles. Back Ingles to Ingles. Club, Ingles right? club in, in downtown. It was funny you said Eagles because we did play a couple of Eagles. But two two Eagles back to back this week, past weekend. Oh, so, uh, cool. And it was nice to see some familiar faces over at the Linwood Eagles. Uh, but they had, a, they had a really good charity that uh, they do uh, did a charity for the Burn Recovery Foundation. Yeah. yeah. Kids. And then uh, we got New Year's Eve up in Gold Bar. And then uh, after that, anybody's guess? <laughs> I'm going to say that um, things are going to be a little different in the new year. I'm not going to make any any. Uh, I, things will be different in the new year. That's all I got to say. But are, are you going to continue writing? I'm always going to continue writing. I mean, I may go through some stages of of you know downtime, or if I feel inspired. I mean, I write when I. I feel inspired too. You know, I, I, for the first time I realized other than a stand-up bass, that there's such thing as a fretless bass. Do you play the fretless bass as well? You know, I don't do that. I know there's a lot of musicians that do very well on that. I know Lynn Sorensen yeah. does really well on that, but he's got his, his background as violin. So a violin is fretless anyways. 
Uh, well, last night at yeah. Duval, out in Duval, uh, David Arnold uh, Bishop was playing a fretless guitar that he built. I believe he said he built it or he was building one. A fretless guitar or a fretless bass? Huh? He was fretless. playing bass. Oh, fretless okay. Bass. Right. Yeah. He, yeah. He said, yeah, I always fell over because I didn't realize. I, he was, uh, I may have picked one up once or twice, but um, <laughs> I, all of the basses I have are fretted. Yeah. I got a lot of strings on my bass, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I think we're pretty close to wrapping up here. Um, so we kind of know where your future plans are. We know that you're going to be, um, oh, what did you say? Which one were you going to be on New Year's? That's a place up called Prospectors. Uh, Prospectors. Grill all out and, and they're selling tickets. So it's pre-sale tickets. Okay. Uh, hopefully they sell out because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So yeah. where, where is this at? Uh, this Prospectors? Uh... Prospectors is in downtown uh, Gold Bar. Oh, Gold Bar. Yeah. Oh, I, know, oh, I know where that is. I used yes. to go there to do court karaoke. That, yes. is karaoke. Um, that, that building has been uh, under different ownerships. It was called the Ninth Street Grill uh, when I played there. It was been, it's been a La Hacienda Mexican restaurant. Yeah. Uh, and it's got a hotel out front there. So. Yeah. So if you need to travel and you need a place to stay, uh, and you <laughs> yeah, on New Year's Eve, there's there is a hotel right there. All right, perfect. <laughs> All right. So, what's your New Year's resolutions? Have you thought of them yet? Oh, I don't need any New Year's resolutions <laughs> this year. This year, my New Year's resolutions is just to get better at uh, you know the paths that are in front of me. Right. I'm just going to say when this has always been my thing is sometimes when a door closes, something else opens yes. up yes. and I am moving forward with whatever is opened up. But that's uh, that also kind of goes along with my philosophy is when you get what you need and when the opportunity presents itself, you move forward with that. And sometimes when things go away, there's something else in front of you to go forward with. So one door closes, another opens. Exactly. And that's, okay. uh, you know. There you are. So thank you so much, Ted, for coming on. And hopefully you'll come back sometime in the future and share some more with us. And maybe you'll be on a whole different path. Who knows? Maybe you'll have more music out there that we're, we'll be able to hear and you can share. But in the meantime, good luck on everything that you do. Thank you for coming today. And thank everybody out there for watching. This will be posted on my Facebook page after this interview for people who are working and can't watch it. Um, also, in two weeks, it'll go on my YouTube. If you go to search and you type Joy Ann Lajere, L A J E R E T. It'll bring you to all of the interviews that I've had so far, and Ted will be there in about two weeks. So, with that, we're gonna we're gonna stop going live. But thank you so much for being with us, Ted, and thank you for being. Thank here. you, Joy. And I feel very honored that you asked me to. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe we